Koyan, it's 4.30 p.m. and we're about to take a street food tour. Now this is a free walking tour with Guru Walks and we took one last night, it was a ghost tour, but it wasn't really a ghost tour, it was more like the culture, the history, the tradition of Vietnam and it really made us appreciate Hoi An so much more. Tonight, it's the same guide, it's Min. And so I'm excited to go out with him because he said we're going back to the back streets and we're going to try a lot of very traditional Hoi An foods. So I think it's going to be a fantastic night. Hello! Hello. I told you! I told you we're always late. Sorry? Uh, no problem. Okay. Uh, two minutes and uh, we all just arrived. So. Okay, yeah? good. Okay. Uh, Angelina and Alan. Alan, yeah. Uh, nice they took you. a tour nice. with me yesterday. So. Oh, oh, it was awesome. Okay. Yeah. Our first stop is at one of the best banh mi shops in all of Hoi An. Right here you'll see a very famous banh mi shop, probably the most famous in all of Hoi An. And that's because Anthony Bourdain came here over 10 years ago, included it on his show, and now it's so busy all the time with tourists. But locals will tell you it's a fantastic banh mi shop, but they don't go there. And that's because there's always a line. Hoi An is known as one of the best places in the country for banh mi because of the quality of its bread. And a lot of shops in Hoi An get it from the place just to the right. It opened up the day that Vietnam won the American War and it's still open today. They make fantastic bread and so that is where we're going to try banh mi. So you can go to Anthony Bourdain's place and wait in line or go to the place where everybody else gets the bread because the bread is the best part of the banh mi. Although we're in the heart of the Hoi An Tourist District, this is a spot that not a lot of tourists go to. You're only going to find locals. It is called Ban Nhoc Tit Sien Nuong. I butchered that, but basically let me explain this to you. It's rice paper wrap around rice noodle, vegetables, and then marinated pork of sesame, fish sauce, sugar. And then everybody kind of has their own special recipe. But this spot is really popular. In fact, it was so popular after 20 years, the son took over for the mother. And then they serve it with a little bit of fish sauce. Now, they serve it in a deconstructed style and you put it all together. Thankfully, Min did it for me so that I can just enjoy. This is amazing. The pork is sweet, salty, but you've got this freshness. This is so good. First two spots have been delicious. So delicious. Mm. Min also just shared with us, why do people sit on those small short seats? I thought it was because, you know, in Asia, they're so much better at squatting than Westerners, and so that was comfortable for them. But actually he said to me, it's because uh, street food is actually illegal in Vietnam. And so they need to have something that is easy to pick up and run. So next up is Bang Da, which is a crushed rice cake. And so what you have in here is a rice cracker sandwich with rice noodle in the middle. Now, Min told us that the reason people eat it is really just an excuse to have this fish sauce. So there are over 20 plus different types of fish sauce within Vietnam. He doesn't think he's eaten all of it. This one is aged for three months and it has a little bit of spring onion in the middle. And he said you put it in your hand and you smash it. All right. Maybe smash it again. So you just take off a little bit of it. It's dip it in this fish sauce. Mmm. It's salty, tangy, almost a little bit spicy, but like it's the acidity. But it's really delicious. It's all about this sauce. But this cracker is good. Mmm. Want all my tips, including what didn't make it into videos? Check out my Vietnam guide for what to see, eat, and do, plus crucial tips for renting a motorbike in Vietnam. Yeah, that is uh, the dish from, uh, from China. Uh, from China. Uh, we've been influenced with Chinese uh, cuisine. 
and uh, you know now in the in Huan, we also have this uh, like very very long time ago, hundred of years ago we already had this, and then uh, of course like the ingredients to make it in Vietnam we slightly different from uh, from China. Now I love this because we're at a very special place, we're at someone's home. This is to try black sesame soup. It's from this area and specifically this place is very famous with locals and it's because the grandparents have been making this for years. It's originally a Chinese dish but it has been adapted with local Vietnamese herbs. So it has sweet potato, it has black sesame seeds and the grandparents, the grandfather lived to 108 years old. He just died last year. The grandmother is 99. And when she had her blood tested, they said that she had the blood of a 40 year old because they would go to bed at 8 p.m., wake up at 3.30 a.m. to make this dish. Now, if you come here, there is a limit. They're not gonna let you have more than three of these. And that's because if you eat it all, it's so difficult to make, other people won't be able to eat it. It's black, it looks like a black pudding. It comes out warm. Don't scoop from the middle because you'll burn yourself. You scoop from the sides and mm, it's warm. It has a toasty sesame flavor. It's really good, very hearty, not too sweet at all. And a lot of people come here and they try to eat a lot of it because it's good for you. But they do have a limit. I don't think you can have more than three of these because then other people will miss out on it. I will say this, this is a really good stop because good for your digestion means that when we're done this, we'll have more room for other food. Next up, we're at Meraki Bakery and we're trying pastries. We have a shoe pastry and an eclair. Now, pastries, bread, all of this was influenced by the French. They make everything from scratch here. And actually when you order the eclair and the choux pastry, you can choose your filling. So they've got strawberry, they've got matcha, they've got vanilla. I think they might have chocolate, but they're known for passion fruit. Let me see. Mm, oh, wow. That's passion fruit. Okay, passion fruit in the eclair, vanilla in the choux, but I've always said I don't love pastry, I don't love dessert, and so I'm gonna let Alan try it first. Mm. It's sweet but not so sweet. Yeah, it's sweet but not so sweet. And then choux pastry, a classic French dessert. Oh, that looks good. Is it good? Now, Min suggested this place because he and his wife come here, they do date night here because everything is made from scratch, but also they like it because it's sweet but not too sweet. Sometimes, especially in Vietnam, you can find there's a lot of sugar in things. I tried a little bit of this passion fruit. It tastes like a passion fruit, like just the right amount of sweetness, a little bit of tartness. Mm. This is so good. This is delicious. I'm so glad we did this food tour because we would have walked by this place not even knowing. Alan loves dessert. We would have gone into any dessert place, but this is the dessert place you should go to. And Min was right. This passion fruit filling, it's where it's at. Mm. breaking one of Min's rules by going to a place where you will find a lot of tourists and this is Kaolau Ballet. Now this is a restaurant that has been around since 1975 and one of the most popular and best restaurants for Kaolau. I've had Kaolau twice. First thing I ate in Hoi An last night and this is going to be my third time and I'm going to have it tomorrow night for dinner for my birthday. I love it. Now this dish reflects the history, the culture of Hoi An and Vietnam. It has noodles which look like udon, that's Japanese influence. It has pork that's cooked in Chinese traditional way and then it has local Vietnam fresh greens. It is so good. Now in Hoi An, it's very special and you can only get it this way in Hoi An because it uses water from a 1,000 year old well to make the noodles. It also uses ash from a local tree. And then the pork here, pork is not factory farm pork, it's good local pork. It is so delicious here. If you don't eat pork like Alan, don't worry. 
other places that I've gone to, they made him a chicken version. So you don't get the Chinese influence other than the chicken. And tonight he's going to have the vegan version because he's a trooper. When I did that little introduction, Alan was standing in front of this illuminated sign of the mother. She's still here in spirit, uh, but now her reflection is in my eyes. So you can see these thick udon style noodles. And I can already tell this is delicious pork. And then we've got the local greens. One of the things that we realized last night is when Alan got the chicken version of it, they put these crackers on top. I actually thought it was chicharron. I thought it was uh, crispy pork skin, but it's not. They take the kalao, that rice noodle, and they actually fry it, break it down and fry it into this. All right, will it be? as good as the ones I've had before. Oh, I see some bean sprouts in there. Oh, it looks good. Mm. Oh. Let me get some of this pork. Mm. Oh, the pork is so good. It's sweet, it's tender. Mm. The one that I had, we eat one in an alley that is delicious. I'm gonna have it tomorrow night for my birthday. But this one is also fantastic. If you're the kind of person you don't want to eat in an alley, you'd prefer to eat in a restaurant. This one's been around since 1976, so it's definitely worth supporting. Mm. Oh, it's our last stop. Is at a tea house. And uh, today, yes. uh, new normally, he closed. Oh. But today, because uh, uh, you want to take a, like, a video, yeah. so I asked him to give us a oh. tea presentation. And most of all, he represents the tea, Vietnamese tea, in a very, very modern way. Oh, cool. And this is not our traditional like, cup. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're at La Cao Tea House. And normally it's not open at night, but very special. They stayed open for us. And it's a different way to have a tea ceremony. Very modern. Look at these glasses that they serve in. What we're going to try is fermented, eight-year fermented oolong tea. Is there any way you're supposed to drink it or you just drink it? Just drink it. Just drink it. Well, like, that's the best kind why? of way. Like why? That we should have more. Like this. This is delicious. <laughs> and uh, now he will let you to taste like one of the most expensive tea in the house. The dragon tail tea. Their first tea was cold brew, the second tea is hot, and it's dragon tail, which is extremely rare. They've never seen it outside of Vietnam, and within Vietnam, it's in the north, in the jungle. No fertilizer, just let nature do what it does and pick it. See how it is each year. Every year it's different because it's not farmed. It grows in the wild, in the jungle. I'm really excited to try this. This is special. So it's hot. This is a white tea and it's really hot right now so we can just smell it. So what we learned was the most important thing with tea is the water. And here it's Aquafina, not Dasani. Second is the quality of tea. Third is how you brew it. Fourth is who you're with. So we're going to drink this three times. Brew it three times. And the flavor will change each time with the water. So wider cups, so you smell less, you taste more, and the flavor should be stronger. Yeah. I loved this tasting. So interesting and easygoing approach. Definitely one of the most unique experiences you can do in Hoi An and so affordable. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.